Hey, great moments are born from great opportunities. And we have a great opportunity at just such a time as this. Hey, and welcome to the Summerbrook Takeaway. I am Tanner Treffin, joined by Pastor Joey, and we are helping you apply the message made for this from this past Sunday. Yeah, yeah, and we really dove into the book of Esther and also used two movie illustrations from The Miracle and Lord of Rings, two two really great movies. Yeah, uh, those are great movies, and if you're enjoying this podcast and getting something out of it, continue to come along with us by subscribing on our channels. Yeah, super excited about uh, diving into the message and helping you bring application to your lives and your walk with God. So you had your uh, two walking sticks. Um, yeah, and yeah. And you like went, I don't know, like Superman or... Thanos or something up there <laughs> for breaking, breaking I was, that stick. I was really, I, I was like, man, this will be terrible in the second service if I if I'm not able to break this stick because it was a thicker one than the first service, and so I even told the church, hey, I'm so glad I was able to break that. One. So uh, <laughs> I, I didn't see that as the first one, but uh, and then you were hitting the second stick and it was pretty sturdy. You got any bruises on those knees? After no, that? no. Uh, you know, and I, I really like the illustration of realizing the strength of that that people need to be able to lean on us and we need to be able to lean on others that stay with it for the long haul. Gandalf went to go see Saruman and I just think people need to be able to come to us. We need to be able to go to others that live for the long haul. Yeah, and how um, discouraging, painful it is when you're already in a weak spot and afraid and hurting yourself and you're going to that person that you thought was going to be a place of strength and wisdom. And they've compromised and gone to the dark side, you know, and just totally how alone and uh, just hurt you must feel in those times, you know. So. Yeah, and and it motivates you. It it really motivates you to to live with endurance and to live strong for the Lord. And uh, I feel like that moment for Mordecai and Esther, when the entire Jewish population was depending upon them, they were willing to stand strong and do what was correct and right instead of uh falling to the and and a compromise of culture Mm. yeah you said um the devil breaks us because we minimize the little things yeah and i think that's such a big takeaway for all of us um of just to not um belittle make make little of the little things of just daily obedience daily seeking god of humility spending time in the word and praying and loving your family and and doing those small things right because those small things lead to the greater bigger strength yeah um, that's of, huge. of integrity so just, yeah that's right on so that's, that's huge so just just be faithful in the little things a day as you're listening so um, you talk about the truth push that Mordecai gives, and man, what a truth push it was! If, if Esther didn't go and talk to the king, you know, all the Jews would have perished, and, and God would have raised up a deliverance from somewhere else. Um, but we have the book of Esther and this story and her amazing moment where she, you know, has courage because of the faithfulness of Mordecai being that father figure in her life. Yeah, and so we got to continue to receive and give truth pushes by being him humble and realizing that we don't have all the answers. You know, that whole Reggie Wayne, uh, coach me like a rookie, always having, uh, who used to play for the uh, Colts Hall of Famer that would always say every year, coach me like a rookie. And so having that, Teachable spirit, never feel like you've arrived. That's big, it's huge. Yeah, and I think um, your personality is helpful to kind of be self aware here. Because uh, some people, they're like, they love conflict, they love giving, I would say, maybe even true slams <laughs> all the time. And maybe you could just be, you know, apply this like maybe a truth push, not a truth slam sometimes, yeah, you know, right. just a little softer with your truth that you're sharing. But it's, it's necessary, but doing it with a little more love or graciousness. But for me, I feel like I just want everyone to get along and I can kind of um, – switch to like a passivity mode where I just like let everything just be and I, I, and I don't intervene at all. Um, and so for me, it's really a big takeaway to, to don't go passive and don't just, you know, put, take your hands off, but but be an active leader and be a father and, and have those helpful truth pushes. Yeah, and, and, and at times be a, a stop sign where you're like, hey, stop. The, the Lord saying, you don't need to move any forward. You don't need to move forward anymore. You need to stop. Yeah, and I love how you said this for our our kids, our parenting, our small group leading, um, the workplace you're in. You know, all these situations need uh, faithful men and women who are willing to stand up and stand for truth. So. Amen. Amen. 
Um, I loved how you talked about like when someone corrects you or or gives you that truth push that you're like, I don't like it, but I love it. And, yeah. and I read that in Proverbs about like how a wise man, you know, receives rebuke and, and loves that wisdom that he gets. You know. Yeah, you you, uh, it, you love the results of it. I love the results of uh, someone speaking truth into my life and. Obviously, at times you're able to receive it better than at other times when you're fatigued or tired or discouraged. But that's where you try to read the other person. Is this someone that needs a truth push right now or do you need to uh, to wait until a more opportune time? Sometimes it, it's desperate where you got to do it when, you, when it's there regardless of how the other person is emotionally. But it, I, I believe that's an art learning more and more of care. I've heard it called care fronting where you care enough to confront someone or, and, uh, but also receive God's word that way. Lord, teach me, show me, help me to see what you want me to see. Help me to say what you want me to say. Yeah. Amen to that. God, I love the illustration of you pushing yourself and stopping yourself with the Bible. I just think that's so true. Um, you quoted Herb Brooks, uh, the great moments are born from great opportunities. And you yeah, did this whole speech the there. miracle, uh, the movie, the miracle is great. And this uh, is our time. Uh, I'm uh, sick and tired. <laughs> it, they beat us, probably beat us nine times out of 10, but not tonight. This is our time. Those Russians, you know, <laughs> but, uh, I, I, he said great moments are born from great opportunities. And I think great opportunities come from great opposition and they were up Ooh, against the great opposition yeah. with the Russians and, um, we're in a culture where, you know, uh, Craig was talking about such a toxic masculinity and against, you know, men being men and standing up and leading their families and, and all things like that. And so we have great opposition. So it's great opportunity to just shine a light and be the man of God he's calling you to be. Yeah, it's huge. Uh, God has called men. It, it, he's built them to be strong, to be strength to lean upon. That's why it really grabbed me about how uh, Saruman was not... Uh, there to be strength for Gandalf to lean on in the movie Lord of the Rings. We got to be strong men of God, uh, uh, husbands, fathers, uh, leading in the church, the workplace, to to live from the strength God's provided us. And don't be afraid to lead. Don't be afraid to step out and be who God's called you to be. Yeah, well, you said from the strength God has given you, because I know a lot of times you're like, I don't got what it takes, you know, it's not in me. And it's, it's not in you, it's God working through you. That's, That's right, the whole that. power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Um, and man, uh, Esther has one of the most epic moments in the Bible, uh, you know, just saying like, if I perish, I perish, you know, I'm ready, I'm ready to do what's right, even if I die. And, um, man, that's just such a, we need more people of courage in, in our culture of men and women who are willing to, you know, whatever it takes, God, your will be done. And if I perish, I perish. Yeah. Isn't that powerful? You, Cause you could teach this Esther would be great for a mother's day message or a Father's Day message, because you have Mordecai, the father, adopted father, and you have Esther, this woman of great courage, after she received the truth push, and, and it didn't take much pushing, just a little bit, and she was, it, it was in her, and, and but that, the key about prayer and fasting does not need to be missed in this. Prayer and fasting gives courage. Mm. It really does. It strengthens, it motivates, it moves us to courage. Um, there's a, a quote um, that he who bows the knee before God can stand before any any man. And uh, I was looking that up to share it with you, and it was actually, it's attributed to a, a Mormon president. So I was like, oh, well, maybe when we were talking about how he went to the LDS, maybe I shouldn't use an LDS quote <laughs> in the uh -huh. message. But just because, you know, someone is believing the wrong thing and, and is Mormon doesn't mean they can't share great truth, and I think that's a great truth. No, that's quote. good. And speaking of how did the, the mission trip go? It was, it was really great. Um, I was so proud of the, the students that went and uh, talking to the door knocking and, and talking to students at BYU and really challenging yourself to know the scripture and know the, the word to be able to converse uh, with these people. And I definitely pray for, for LDS people in our city right now as well as the, 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 the they, those in the Utah. It's just really hard um, to reach them because they're, a lot of it is based on just upon a feeling instead of really looking at the evidence and the truth. And they want to be with their family forever is the big thing that they push. And they believe yeah. if they leave Mormonism that they won't be with their family forever. And they lose their whole family right now here on earth because they get like excommunicated. And it's just, it's really hard for them to come out of it. So. Yeah, yeah. That, that, those seeds planted and, and becoming solidified in your own faith as a Christian to be able to reach out to the Mormons. That's mm -hmm. powerful. Yeah, definitely a mission field for sure. Amen. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, I love this kind of this thing you're hitting on of um, our daily courage now, our faithfulness now, and the little things will lead to life and death courage later. Um, and that goes back to those, you know, just being faithful in the little things. And this is my this is basically my takeaway. That my takeaway is to take seriously the little obedience and courage every day to be a place of strength tomorrow. Because I, I, you know, I want to be someone that, like, as a youth pastor, that these students I'm leading can look for strength later, and, and my sons and my daughter. Um, and I, I know that it's from being faithful right now today and depending on God and not getting prideful. Um, and so just being faithful. Love. Yeah, and for me, it was, I realized God really pointed out that I was starting to neglect my, the habit of being in God's word in the evening time before I go to bed. And I don't read a ton, but a decent amount of scripture at nighttime as well. And the Lord really spoke to me about leaning back into that habit because I had a powerful year last year spiritually. And one of the key reasons is because I was reading scripture not only in the morning, but in the evening before I went to bed. And that, that was just, it was that daily habits. It was that daily power source that I needed to come back to. That's good. So, And I love the part about Mordecai when the king here, uh, re, ju it just so happened. And the, the, there's no coincidences in the Lord. And just being... Don't give up. I feel like uh, sometimes we just give up in the daily grind when God is, uh, you, God hasn't forgotten us. God hasn't forgotten you, and your life matters to give strength to others. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so encouraging to me that God hasn't forgotten you, that he's working behind the scenes, connecting all the pieces, and he can overturn any situation, you know, in any moment. Um, he just, he, he does, he just, when everything comes together for certain moments, he was like, wow, God, that was you. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, it's huge. And those times where you're hoping and praying and that moment doesn't come through and there's heartache, uh, realizing that God's got a perfect plan for you and he loves you. So it's a huge piece. Yeah. Um, Divine Moments Connect is what we're talking about there and how we need more uh, spiritual fathers with 1 Corinthians 4. You ended on. Anything? Yeah, we don't need, we, we have guides, Apostle Paul said, but we don't have fathers. We need to have fathers seasoned, strengthened in the faith. Every year I, we grow older, we should be stronger and, and, and be more solidified. Our soil, And as a church, every year our church should become more and more the soil of the church, the, the depth, the, the strength of our church at Summerbrook Church should be, grow stronger and stronger. The soil, the spiritual soil should become stronger every year. Yeah, the, the, and growing in wisdom and be able to protect people. I feel like that goes back to that walking stick, you know, illustration, just something to lean on, to use as a protection piece, and, and that's definitely a calling of men. So. Yeah, no, that's huge too. Um, it, it's really important. And that Psalm 68, 5, that, uh, you know, he's a father to the fatherless, that each one of us have issues in our life and woundedness where he, he, he brings healing, he's a father to the fatherless. Yeah, I had one guy come up to me after the service and just uh, share about, man, that message really resonated with me. I realized that I have some wounds from my dad of just, uh, he was there, but he just was lacking and like really caring about me and pouring into me. And I was praying over him for that. And um, he's going to go to, I think, Brian's group, um, the men's group on Saturday mornings. And just, get, it's, it takes time to kind of deal through those past wounds and stuff like that. It's one, that's why we do freedom groups is because, the father wound, and there's a mother wound as well. It's just more often a father wound, not to, mother wounds, significant, but there's father wound you hear a whole lot more of. Uh, it's huge of finding healing. And so the freedom groups in the fall, and then we do the freedom conference. It's a huge part of our church of helping people heal from their yesterdays so they have hope for their todays and to their tomorrows. Amen. Yeah, I'm excited. What's uh, next week's message going to be on? I am super excited. We move into Esther. Uh, the the last part of Esther, Esther 6, verse 13, and I don't want to give it away. I know you can read the scripture and, and see it, but as we lean into as God is uh, transforming using Esther uh, to uh, save the Jews, and, uh, the, and also we're going to deal with anger with Haman and Mordecai, and the, the contrast that is huge. I'm excited. Yeah, you left us on a cliffhanger, so yeah, I'm excited to hear it, that. It's going to be awesome. Cool. Um, any other takeaways or thoughts for the church? Yeah, just super excited about groups. Give a shout out to my uh, small group that meets on Wednesday nights. We're actually breaking down the message and, and doing soap journaling together. And uh, Dale and Debbie Kimmel are my assistant leaders there. So shout out to uh, my group. Love you guys. Thanks for watching and listening as well to apply 
on our group Wednesday night. But all the groups we're doing, it's awesome. So it's just a really great summer. It was great seeing all the cars. Thanks to uh, Eric Rojas doing the car show in the Mustang Club there and and the hot dogs and drinks and cornhole. It was just a great Father's Day. Yeah, service. it was a lot of fun. Yeah, thank you so much for everyone who helped pull that off. And uh, church, thanks so much for listening. Um, what is your takeaway from this message? We need more spiritual fathers, not weak men, and we need strong women too. So let's uh, be an Esther, be a Mordecai, and walk in our takeaway together. God bless you guys.